Hi, I am Sophia. And I am Sophia. <laughs> but you can call me Dory. And this is our group number one. Um, this is all about The Natural Order, which was written by Ian Stewart. Ian Stewart, such a great author, don't you think? Complicated author, I think. Mm -hmm. Which makes him great. Okay, so we're going to talk about the chapter one of this book, Nature's Numbers. Okay, first, you know, what really hooked us up in getting the idea that Math is not usually boring as we perceive it. Right. Because in peculiar ways, math is the music of reason, the poetry of logic, and the repetitive scheme of the world that surrounds us. And for Ian Stewart's point of view, we live in a universe of patterns. You know, that is so true. We do live in a universe of patterns. Ian Stewart really flooded us about mathematics and examples of how these patterns exist in our reality wherein such patterns are clues that underlies the rules and regular regularities sorry that soon define the beauty that we discover in nature many of which are when the stars move around in circles season cycles in yearly intervals and the waves that march across the ocean that are similar to the sand dunes in the desert about numbers and equations yeah. like it's all around us from the moment we wake up to the moment we sleep witnessing the cycle of nature again and again yeah Stuart also revealed two types of patterns fractals and chaos mankind has known about this for almost 30 years the fractals show its beauty through geometric shapes and fine structure while chaos well it shows its beauty because of its randomness and its inconsistency. Like for example, snowflakes, they're fractals. Yeah. And the weather, it's chaos. Would you like to elaborate on that? like to elaborate on this because in the chapter Stuart, Stuart tried to demonstrate that patterns in nature can be evident that cues the beauty and irregularities of it. Quiet please. However, this also suggests the idea that an extraction of such patterns stand out. When you see lines, which is gonna be seen on the screen, it tells us that the rule that there is an exception. For instance, you see a four-leaf clover, in which it is considered lucky because you can rarely see one. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's like considered very lucky. Mm. These are not just to be admired, but are important clues that help conduct the natural process of things that just happen accidentally around them. Now you see, it makes me appreciate all those things all the more. Because like, when you see a four-leaf clover, you think of, um, it's just lucky. But it's lucky because there is a pattern, usually, in nature. But and that's an exception. Just, yeah. Because yeah. you only see it It once. is rare. It is rare. So it makes it all the more special. Right. right. But moving on, we also have... Numerology. Numerology, which helps us in the method of finding patterns in random objects. You see, it is quite easy to find patterns in random objects. But it is also dangerous. Why? Because he also represented the case, which is Kepler's neat, tidy theory that represented the six planets, which was actually not a neat, tidy theory because there are how many planets in the universe? And once, as humans, we discovered the vastness and the randomness of the universe, there is no such thing as neat and tidy theory. Human as we are, we have not discovered the whole lot of what's happening around the universe. Yeah. Then this page way to Isaac Newton's theory of gravity. So, there's no such thing as Wait, 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 wait. But did you know that Stuart debated what to name his book? It's named Nature's Numbers, right? Yeah. But he actually debated if he should call it Nature's Numbers and Shapes. His oh. first excuse was why he didn't name it Nature's Numbers and Shapes was that because it sounded off having to put and shapes to the title. But his second excuse is really good because 
mathematical shapes can always be deduced to numbers. So in that way, it will seem kind of repetitive having to say nature's numbers and shapes, when shapes are reduced to numbers. <laughs> so better off call it nature's numbers. Good one, Stuart. Yet, he wrote um, that it is often better to think of shape as shapes. Oh. Because that makes yeah. use of the powerful and intuitive visual capabilities, where a complicated list of numbers are best reserved for a weaker and more laborious symbolic ability. See, that's actually quite good. But you see, Sophie, Stuart did not just stop there. He proved everything in life, dead or living, has shape, pattern, and is related to mathematics. He even started talking about simple shapes present in nature, like ripples, for example, a pattern familiar to us when we go to the beach or when we look at the water from the boat. These patterns that resemble waves, waves that can be found in the ocean, the desert, etc. These patterns can also resemble whirlpools, swirling and orbiting a small point of origin. Same pattern that is also present in space, which are galaxies, for example, a swirling space of stars and planets. I get where you're going, Ian Stewart. Like, everywhere. We it see is, you. <laughs> it is really everywhere, just how perfect it is. Yeah. Even in the animal kingdom. The symmetry, the shape of the human body. <laughs> it's like air, it's just there. It goes unnoticed by the blind eye. But if you look closely enough, even the pattern and rhythm of her walk, there is a natural order. Left, right, left, right, left, right. <laughs> a pattern, a numerology, fractal, or chaos. Fascinating, isn't it? As the years go by, we discover more things about it. You know, I know why Stuart said in the last pages of his chapter that the patterns we thought that are formless or random are now recognizable in human eye. Like, they now have scientific verification because of our curiosity, us humans, studying the process of shapes, it's, it has become more distinctive. However, my dear Sophie, Stuart still encourages us to play with shapes and we are almost ending our vlog so let's just end this vlog with a quote instead Sophie because it's practically very long already and you know what I need more screen time so I'm just gonna say that everything just, just proves a point like in the first sentence of the chapter we can also sum up the idea that we live in a universe of patterns right. we do live in a universe of patterns and it's fascinating and we love you, Iron Stewart. Not really. We love you. Not really.